Hey everybody, back in Carlsbad, California. This time we're at the Cobra Puma headquarters looking over the new dark speed lineup with TO. Thanks for having us out, really appreciate it. Excited to jump into this one. I've already heard some really, really cool things. Yeah, the buzz has been great so far. Um, we're very excited about dark speed and you know, the, the excitement around here really peaks around this time. You know, yeah. We've spent a lot of time in R&D and innovation working on these products for years and now we're happily to show them to you. Yeah, and you guys came off a pretty hot year with Aerojet too, so I would imagine that a lot of people are seeing how you guys are gonna improve on those shapes and that engineering and the performance that went into those, because those took a really big heat on tour too as well. Like there was quick adoption compared to previous generations, there was very quick adoption into Aerojet, which was really cool to see from the Cobra lineup. It's always a lineup that, you know, tour presence wise, there's a couple big stars obviously, mm -hmm. but it's not the biggest thing. But I think you guys hit really well, particularly in fitting bays like at Golf Tech, because that it's a little bit more price conscious typically. And it's also a ton of technology packed into different models that are great for different people, which is what I wanna break down here and so just walk us through the new line, tell us what models we have available, and then we can kind of go through each one of them individually. Okay, sure. You know, one of the hardest things actually to do is beat your old product yep. because it's really good. And Aerojet was really good for us this year. Uh, with dark speed, really it's about out of this world speed. So you're gonna see a lot of conversation around speed. Okay and aerodynamics. Um, so we've continued those stories and continued evolving those designs to get even more performance. Uh, the lead flagship will be the Darkspeed LS, as you know. Um, LS being low spin, that's pretty simple. Now, one of the things we did with this design was we actually added a third weight. Yeah. And the third weight, you said, well, geez, it was optimized before. Where'd you get the weight for the third weight? Yeah. We actually did some things up front with the power bridge and the power shell to save us some weight so we could add that third weight. Awesome. One of the things with low spin designs, at some point, you get too low spin, yeah. and then the club becomes more niche. And we didn't want to do that. We wanted to continue uh, strong strength with performance both on tour and in the market. So adding that third weight back while everything else is shifted forward means a little more forward CG in the front weight settings, but also a more playable back weight setting. Uh, and as you can see, it's a very rounded shape. It's a, a continuing the aerodynamics we've done yeah. for many years, working with Kyle Berkshire and our innovation team here that helps us quite a bit with those. Um, so this is the eight, excuse me, the nine O. We will also have a an eight O. So awesome. ask me, why would you make an eight O when you have a nine O? Yeah. Well, part of the fun of the eight O is it's actually even faster than the nine O. It's a more aggressive shape. This is a shape similar to what Kyle Berkshire uses. Um, it's the best aerodynamics we can make. So this is the driver that when you get those players in who are high spin and still too high spin with a 9.0, the 8.0 is the recipe. Now the 8.0 is also going to be a little faster because it's got a little bit more aerodynamics, a little more aggressive shaping. And you can kind of see this. Uh, we'll show it up later, but you can see how it's much more triangular, yeah, much more rounded on the face profiles yep. um, and some tucking and nipping and tucking, if you will, yeah. from an aerodynamic purpose. So. The 8.0 is one, if you get those players, you gotta hit it because it's gonna be really fast. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's a much more, for, for some of the higher skilled guys too, this is a much more presentable package, I guess you could say, because they get a little bit more picky about what it looks like. And taking something like this, so you really have, instead of three models, there's kind of three and a half models this exactly. year. Exactly. Where the 8.0 is actually a different head shape slightly with different visuals. You can see it right away between the two, mm -hmm. but there's actually a slightly different atmosphere going into the 8 for specifically those players that you know are gonna fit really well into this, which is not a huge amount of people, but for the people that need it, it's gonna be a really awesome option to have in a fitting bay. Exactly. It's a bit of that race car, performance car. You go to yeah. your dealer and you can have the regular model. Oh, we've got this special one over here. So we know uh, the demand has been really high. The performance is really good. Again, a little faster, um, slightly different shaping. You know, I would call it less traditional. So that's where we have kind of both as we flow the LS line with distinct models. The 10.5 and the 9s will be very comparable. Sure. The 8 is a little bit more aggressive. And we know that, you know, with our MyFly sleeve system, you, you know, if it's a little too low spin, yeah. you can fix that with adding some loft. Awesome. Well, cool. Let's keep rolling through the rest of the models then. And here I, I, I jumped ahead, but showing you the inside, you can see that power bridge system yeah. is actually curved downward and more forward than the past. That's how we get the weight more forward but then that allowed us to add the weight in the back. Yeah, and for everybody at home watching this, when you add that weight in the back, you're increasing the overall stability and forgiveness of the head 
regardless of the other weight that's on the head. So taking that, which is essentially technology that you used to find just in the standard head, and you're letting the, the better player, the lower spin player, have a little bit more forgiveness built in that head. Because typically, like you said, you can get to the point where the miss is too low spin, and then that could be disastrous for people. But adding a little bit of stability in the back of that head and allowing a little bit more MOI points entered into that design helps people keep that ball in control off the tee and there's no worry then with the low spin version of that head. Yeah, and when you talk to Andrew Lusty here in a little bit, you know, he's our fitter here in Carlsbad, um, really good player, and he says, yeah, I, I, I tried it in the front, it was just a little low, so I put it in the back and it feels just right, plays just right. So great adding to the LS model in dark speed. Awesome. Really cool. So we have the X now, and you can see, you guys will shoot this a little bit later, but there's a very slight color highlight. So X is blue, and that kind of ties into some of the shaft stories we've seen in the industry. So we go black, blue, red, so pretty simple uh -huh, story. Like so that. again, very subtle though, right? It's yep. still a dark speed theme, yeah. still have a great look. The addition this year is we've actually added a front weight mm -hmm. to the dark speed X. And yes, well, you got a back weight in this one. Why do you need a front one in this one? Well, we do find that players, they want to pick by size and forgiveness a lot of times, and sometimes they want to produce a little bit more speed and, and low spin. With this design, not all the way to an LS design, sure. but a little bit more forward. So this widens the reach of this club. Uh, as we know, movable weights are great for fitting, and what you guys do all day is yeah, fitting. Absolutely, so yeah. it's perfect from a flexibility standpoint. Um, the trick always with these is, can you get them to sound good and fly yeah. good and play good? Uh, but now the X comes with a weight in front. So this is gonna give us uh, still about 5,000 in the back, which is really good. And then we're gonna lose a couple hundred, but move it forward so you get that lower spin, faster speed setting in the X model. Again, still our most popular model of the three. Um, so it fits a lot of players and it'll be a little faster. We've also added some of the aerodynamics. What we do with aerodynamics is we pioneer them in the LS and then we morph them a little bit through the line. So this has better aerodynamics than last year's Aerojet. So a little bit more scooped up in the back, a little bit more rounded profile, uh, all those things to make this even faster aerodynamically so you get more club speed and then potentially for lower spin yeah, the rounded sole design on all of them, you can get like it's very apparent right away. It looks it looks different than something that I would say goes all the way back to like the OG LTD, where it looks it looks very different from anything that's happened since then. And you see there's so much more camber in that sole, which is really, really cool from a, a player's perspective visually because it looks no matter which model you're holding behind a ball, it just looks so appealing to hit it looks very confident inspiring yeah. so very very cool and i also that little touch of the blue and the red is really cool yeah it's kind of neat when yeah. you see it all packaged together yeah that's it's like it's kind of like an industry little niche thing <laughs> but the people that will know those colors will know it uh so that's very very cool and it fits well into our stock shop yeah stories absolutely as well. yeah okay um and last but not least we have the max um this max is a back weight and a heel weight. So max forgiveness that we can make, it's over 5,600, and then max heel weighting. And again, when you combine the heel weighting with the MyFly sleeve in the upright settings, this baby will be a strong draw uh, slice fire. Yeah, absolutely. The max model is always, to me, it's actually the most um, intriguing between any lineup of drivers because there's so many more people that should probably play that model that don't because they either get stuck in the standard or they opt for an LS model, which they should not be playing, which we know happens a lot, but that's part of the experience of getting fit, right? Like mm -hmm. when somebody comes into a fitting bay, they have that experience with the fitter, they know that they're getting the expertise off of it, and they're walking out with something that truly works versus either buying online or going into a, a retail environment and just trying to pick one off of you know what the, the sheets on the wall say or something like that. So this is a really good one because I think a lot of fitters utilize the, the draw bias or just let's say the heel weighted CG or drivers a little bit more because there's so many players out there that can benefit from that forgiveness and just the little bit of making sure that that slice turns into a straightish kind of shot. We always say in the industry that there should be way more people playing these yeah. super game improvement drivers because they don't hit the ball that well, you know, but they do buy aspirationally, so that's a little bit of the problem. Yeah. We try and make these look great in the family so that they look really good, um, but performance is, is what they need here. So uh, we know, and we've talked for a long time, I've said this to people for years, I said, I've always found that the most people that could benefit from fitting are the poor players because yep. they don't know what they're doing. Absolutely. And a, an equipment solution can usually help them quite a bit more. A good player is already pretty good. Yeah. You know, so you can get them a little bit more, but in reality, that uh, the higher handicap player is going to benefit the most, and that's where the max comes in. Sure. Awesome. So then we also have a breakout of the fairway here. So walk me through what we see here because I, what I see is a lot of weight 
pushed out to the perimeter, which to me just instantly means forgiving. And then I see two replaceable weights up here, which means speed. So this is the new LS. You have the shell there. And feel how light that shell is compared to the, the finished head. Oh, wow. So huge there's difference. a lot of discretion. Huge class. difference, yeah. So with titanium, you save a lot of weight. Um, this design was something we had been prototyping for a couple of years. Said, hey, we got to launch this thing because it's a great performer. Um, with titanium, you could save all that weight from up high and make it down low. What we decided to do is we actually, you know, as you noticed, we put in three movable weights, so two heavies, one light, as well as 38 grams of tungsten that go in the heel and toe on the inside oh, wow. in those pockets. So you're using all that weight to definitely keep your CG super low and give you some inertia back that you've lost by converting from steel to titanium. Uh, great feedback so far on this from Tour and from the, the people who have hit it already. Uh, it's really that. It's also titanium is a little bit, um, this is a technical term, but it's just a little less stiff than steel. Sure. So it's actually faster ball speed. That's why all the drivers are faster ball speeds than old steel drivers used to be. Okay. So this is definitely gonna be the fastest one we make. It's got a super low CG and a little bit forward so that we can get that high launch angle. Um, and it really hits us forever. So it's great fun. Uh, it'll be titanium. The only difference is it'll be a little bit more than the standard steel ones, $100 more. Sure. But when you hit it, you're like, oh, I gotta have this. Yeah, this there's thing, a reason for this it. This thing's sure. awesome. Okay, <laughs> and then we have, we don't need to go too far in depth, but we have an X and a uh, standard model for the dark speeds in the so fairways. X and a max, yeah. And the, the big change on the max, uh, all these we've improved the internals to give you that performance, but the max is definitely larger at address. Okay. So you yeah. can see that versus where we were in the past. We had a little confusion between the X and the Max from a size perspective. They look too close. Okay. Um, so we definitely want to drive this to, to more back C, CG and more draw by. So that has two weights. The X in the fairway only has one weight. Awesome. And then the last thing to talk about there, I guess, is the new face technology. What is, what's been improved over Aerojet? Um, where is it going? I also... I saw some interesting uh, patterns on the back of the face on the inside. So walk us through a little bit of that because I know you guys... Is, uh, Topo topography on the faces mm -hmm. has been improved year over year over year. So what's the new? Yeah, that's our hot face technology. So highly optimized topology. Um, say that three times fast yeah. and if you can get through that. Um, we also use PowerShell in all these. So again, that's helping those low shots have a little bit more flex. Sure. So optimizing speed across the face as fast as we can be on every point. We know golfers have miss hits and we want to help them play a little better with these technologies. Awesome. That's great. Well, the last thing I guess to talk about is just the new Dark Speed Iron. So this is your guys' game improvement lineup within the Cobra family. Uh, you guys have had a lot of success with the King family of irons. Um, so this is now improving on the game improvement side of that, which, again, I think helps a lot more golfers than people like to right. admit. So that's the PowerShell face. We've improved that a little bit with hot face as well, a little more of a cup section there as opposed to just an L shape. Uh, this is our new updated power bridge. So if you remember last year with Aerojet, we had a two post design. Mm -hmm. This one has a one post design. So this is a steel piece that's attached here. And then we put in some, uh, we put the face on through welding and we inject some foam in there. So what you want to do with this face and this head is make it flexible. You want to make it really flexible around the structure so the face can, can flex. Yep. Um, and it gives you more speed, higher launch angle, all those benefits. What we do with this, and you'll feel this, this is the foam. And you think, well, that's like, that's pretty rigid. Um, so the thing about foams versus steels is they respond at different rates of flex. Okay. So when you hit steel, it responds a certain rate, foam responds a different rate. What you want to do is thin out the face as much as you can at a, just enough support from the foam so it doesn't cave in. So that's why it's got a little firmness to it. That's awesome. Um, and those are uh, expand cell foam that we pour in there in little beads, heat it up, and it expands. So okay. it fills the entire space. As you can see, there's a lot of little gaps in there. Yeah. And then last but not least, we put in a medallion system. I call it a system because it's multiple materials, aluminums, carbon fibers. Uh, there's a high, high bond tape in there. Um, all those things to generate the best overall feel of an iron. We continue to say that's going to be the best feeling game improvement at a standard price that you can buy. Um, also for the look is uh, kind of exciting because it's uh, in the dark speed family. We have this dark finish on it. So um, it's designed to kind of fit into the line. And dark also helps people look a little slimmer. Sure. So we know, as you just said, a lot of people should be playing this. Yep. A lot of people still buy their clubs aspirationally. Yep. It looks a little sleeker aspirationally when it's a darker finish like that. versus a brighter finish. And that's just the stock finish this year is exactly. just that darker yeah. finish. That's awesome. I think stuff like this, just as a side note to the view, I think stuff like this is incredibly cool because it's so hard for engineers, people at these OEMs, people like yourself, to develop something that truly beats the last thing, especially because we all know that you're actually developing a couple years from now, right? Because you have to make them, there's time, right? Mm -hmm. 
But stuff like this is just wild because people don't understand that this, what people would normally just call a badge, which this is now multi-material, so it's more than a badge, mm -hmm. but stuff like this gets improved or developed in a 2% a change in performance because of this piece. Mm -hmm is such a cool thing to me because it shows the evolution of where we're going. Like everybody knows there's limits set by the governing bodies for what you guys are mm -hmm. allowed to do with the performance of the clubs. So there's only so many directions that you can take it. And then stuff like this is just really, really cool little phenomenal pieces of engineering. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that's fun about, you know, those, those pieces on the back, that's tape. And people say, well, tape, well, is that strong enough? Well, yeah, these are really uh, 3M, very high bond tapes. Yeah, sure. uh, and I joke with people, you know, especially when you fly in, I said, you know, most of the airplane panels are held together on an airplane with tape. Yeah. So it's kind of exciting when you think about that. But these tapes are really strong, especially when you have a large surface area. So the idea here is design this so it dampens vibrations. Yeah. If you made these thin structures with all the, those systems in there, they don't sound and feel very good. And we know golfers want everything. They want distance, forgiveness, accuracy, and feel. They yeah. want them all. Yeah. <laughs> I think, and that's that's the coolest thing after you've explained all the, the new highlights of the lineup is each of these was very specifically designed for the player that should be playing it. And the way, the best way to go about that is to hop into a fitting bay and make sure that you're getting the best one for you. But like the little hints, like the colors on these two matching up with the profiles within the industry that you're probably gonna get in a stock shaft, stuff like this little badge, because you know that people that are playing that type of iron will probably appreciate the vibration dampening more than somebody in the King series, just inherently to what that player is gonna be fit for. So there's so much attention to detail on who is actually going to be playing the product versus just performance on a data sheet, which is so important to people, especially in a fitting bay, because it makes a huge difference in the performance that somebody unique to themselves is gonna be able to get out of that product, which is just, is a really cool way to engineer a lineup. So, this was, yeah, this was great. Thank you for walking us forward, through it. I think we're gonna uh, step right behind me here and get a chance to hit these out real quick. Uh, I can't wait to do that. I especially am really excited to see what that eight degree does. It's gonna be fun. Yeah. Thank you again for your time, I appreciate it. All right. Thanks, man.